Welcome back and in this video we're going to take a look at the physical specular and in this mode Render Man works in a slightly different way which allows you to control the specular with a index of refraction and also an extension coefficient. This refraction index as we know is our index of refraction which effectively controls our reflectivity of our object and this extinction coefficient is a second refractive index which creates a more complex Fresnel curve which as we know it controls the fall off to the edge color at the grazing angles of your model. So let's begin by creating a metal but before I need to do that and as we know from our conductive lesson that we need to remove the gain so if I just take the gain down on our model now what we end up with is, is this completely black teapot. So the first thing to do is to increase the edge color and again with the metal I'm going to take this all the way up to the top now we've got this reflective black teapot. So the easiest way within physical mode to create a metal is to use these presets. So if I come down here to refraction index and I click on the preset button, you can see here that we have a bunch of metals. So let's choose aluminium. Now I also need to do this for the extinction coefficient as well. So that has a preset. So if I come here and I choose aluminium, and now what we have is this aluminium teapot. So let's try another one. If I come here to the presets and I go to gold, and I also need to do it for the coefficient, go down to gold. Now what we have is we have another gold teapot. So if you wanted to go ahead and create your own scientific metals, what you need to know is the values for the refraction index and also for the extension coefficient. And the easiest way to find these values is to go to a website called refractiveindex.info. So let me show you what that looks like. So this website here gives you all the values that you need to know for a whole bunch of different metals and materials. So if I come here, you can see that I've got a whole bunch of metals here and I can get all the values that I need. But there's a slightly simpler option here. And if you go to 3D selected data for 3D artists. Now I'm gonna make a brass and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if I just select brass from here, now, without this becoming a lengthy science lesson about the red, green, and blue wavelengths, I've done all the hard work for you, and I've gone ahead, and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do with this website. So, with this refraction index here, we need three values. We need the red, the green, and the blue. And also, for this coefficient, we also need the red, the green, and the blue. So, there are three values that you need to type into this wavelength. The first is for red, and you need to enter 0.65. And what this will do is it will give you the refractive index and also the extinction coefficient values for the red wavelength for brass. So the wavelength for red is 0.65. And if I go ahead here and I go for green, which is 0.55, now it's given me this value and the coefficient value. And then if I go to blue, which is 0.45, now it gives me 1.094 and then 1.829. So if I just let this one go, and if I just bring in this and I summarize it for you. So the wavelength for red is 0.65, the value for green is 0.55, and the value for blue is 0.45. And if you type 0 0.65, 0 0.55, and 0.45 into that website, you will get these numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead here, and I'm gonna type those numbers into the refraction index and the extinction coefficient. So I'm gonna do the refraction index first. So in the red, I need to put 0 0.444. And in the green, I need to put 0 0.527. And then in the blue, I need to put 1.094. And now into the coefficient, I need to put in for the red 3.695. I need to then put 2.765 into the green and into the blue, 1.829. So this is our brass scientific material and luckily for me, it doesn't really look much difference because the last shader we were making was gold. But trust me, this is scientifically correct when it comes to brass. So that's our brass and it's a little bit of effort perhaps, but very useful if you want to recreate a specific metal if say, you're doing some product renders like jewelry, for instance. 
So I just wanted to add one more thing in here, and that's that the preset browser comes already loaded with a whole bunch of physical base materials as well. So if you come down to metals, you can see here that you've got chrome and coppers and gold, you've got iron, you've got platinum. Let's try that. You just simply go import and add to selected, and that will add platinum to our teapot. I select the top and the legs, and then let's make that nickel. And if I select the base, let's make that steel. So what you can see here is that Renovan already comes preloaded with a whole bunch of physically based materials that you can use within your projects. And of course, as you work through your projects and you create more and more physical or artistic materials, you can, of course, save them back into the preset browser and use them within your other projects and also share them within Houdini and also Katana. OK, so let's just jump back to where we were. Now, like all of the speculars, you've got this advanced tab here and you've got the Beckman and the GGX specular mode, you've got your anisotropy, you've got your shading tangent, and of course you've got your bump. Now, there's also another way you can use the physical mode to create materials that aren't necessarily metallic. So if I go ahead here and I reduce the coefficient back down to black, and I'm gonna reset the index of refraction back to its default value, now what we come back to is our black shiny teapot. Now, if I go ahead here and I increase the gain again, and I give it a nice orange color, now what we end up with is our nice orange dielectric plastic material. And the way this is working is it's using this refraction index to create how reflective our shiny teapot is. So if I come here and I type zeros into the red, green, and blue, you can see now that we have no specular on our teapot at all. But if I come back and use a generic value of 1.5, you can now see that what we've got is we've got this nice shiny plastic teapot. So the nice thing about the Pixar surface is that you basically have these two modes. I've showed you the artistic mode and I've also showed you how you can create your materials using the physical mode. And like I said in the artistic lesson, the 3D artists at the Pixar studio, they've asked for this artistic mode because they really like that control over the edge and face color. So I hope this has been useful and I'm gonna see you in the next lesson.